to the United States military says it's conducted more airstrikes on Houthi missiles in Yemen, the latest action against the Iran-backed group. U.S. Central Command said it struck missiles which were preparing to launch against ships in the Red Sea. The British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said the joint airstrikes were in self-defence, that Houthis' attacks on shipping had put lives at risk and were having economic consequences. This as America's top diplomat, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken, embarks on his fifth trip to the Middle East in the past four months. Tension with Iran, which supports the Houthis, are rising. And Washington has also accused Tehran of having its fingerprints on the drone attack that killed three U.S. soldiers at a military base in Jordan last week. The White House has warned that its retaliatory airstrikes on Iran-linked targets in Iraq and Syria are just the beginning, not the end of its response. Iran denies involvement, but its affiliate, the Islamic resistance in Iraq, has claimed responsibility. So what is the U.S. Secretary of State hoping to achieve on his Middle East tour? Well, an American official says Antony Blinken will push for progress on a hostage deal that includes a humanitarian pause. He'll talk to Arab nations about what happens the day after a deal is struck. And we're told Mr. Blinken plans to talk directly to countries in the region about the scope of U.S. actions taken in retaliation for the deaths of those U.S. service members last week. Well, let's go live to our Middle East correspondent, Hugo Pachega, who is in Baghdad for us. So, uh, Hugo, a busy agenda for Mr. Blinken. It is a bit of a juggling act that he's got, isn't it? Exactly. So, you know, the main goal of his trip is to try to secure the release of the hostages who remain in captivity in Gaza, more than 100 hostages who were kidnapped uh, during the Hamas attacks in Israel back in October. And at the same time, uh, secure a uh, pause in hostilities in Gaza to guarantee the delivery of humanitarian aid to the Palestinian uh, population of Gaza. But at the same time, we're seeing that, you know, the Americans are heavily involved in uh, uh, what is happening elsewhere in the region. We've seen that there have been more uh, American airstrikes targeting the Houthis in Yemen. Uh, The Americans are saying that this is about uh, guaranteeing uh, freedom of navigation uh, in that uh, region, that this doesn't have anything to do with the war in Gaza. Houthis are saying that uh, these attacks are going to continue, that they are acting uh, in solidarity with the Palestinians in Gaza, and that uh, these attacks are going to continue unless there is a ceasefire in Gaza. So Gaza, uh, the very heart of what is happening in Yemen. And then uh, the situation here in Iraq and Syria. Uh, American officials are saying that uh, the American response to those attacks targeting uh, U.S. uh, bases in those uh, countries uh, have just begun and uh, more attacks are going to uh, come in the next uh, few days. We saw the first wave of airstrikes targeting Iranian interests in Iraq and Syria on uh, the weekend. And I think uh, the focus now is on Iran and its proxies and how or if uh, they're going to respond. So a very busy agenda for Antony Blinken as he returns to the Middle East. Yeah, I'm interested. You're in Baghdad. What has been the government reaction there to those retaliationary strikes from the US on those targets in the Middle East? Yeah, I think people are still waiting to see what is going to come uh, next because the Americans are saying that this is just the beginning, that uh, more uh, airstrikes are going to happen or more uh, steps are going to be taken to target those uh, groups uh, supported by Iran, uh, groups that have been uh, behind, uh, you know, attacks on uh, U.S. bases uh, in Iraq and Syria. At least that's the accusation being made by the Americans. Uh, But there was, uh, you know, some strong response from the Iraqi government saying that uh, those airstrikes airstrikes violated uh, the country's sovereignty. Now they're making the case for negotiations to happen for the end of the American military presence here uh, in Iraq. Uh, I don't think anything is going to happen anytime soon. But again, uh, it shows how tense, how volatile the situation here uh, has been. Uh, And again, I think people are waiting to see not only in terms of what is going to happen uh, in relation to those uh, American uh, attacks, but also how or if Uh, Iran and its proxies are going to respond. Hugo Pachega, a Middle East correspondent in Baghdad, thank you for joining us.